I currently have about three tons of acorn in storage. Some of it was collected last October, about six months ago, most of it. And some of it is as old as four years old, which I keep just to experiment with and see how long I can actually push it. This video is going to be very helpful for anybody who wants to use acorns at home. The absolutely most important thing that you need to know if you want to eat acorns and you want to eat them throughout the year is that they must be properly dried before putting into any kind of storage. As I twist the shells off, I check each nut and the good nuts go in the small bowl. The ones that go back to the chickens go in the big bowl. You can see a lot of space between the nut and the shell which shows you just how dry we need it to be in order to survive in storage nicely. I'll post a video just about drying options according to what kind of weather you have in your area. Today I'm using a double bladed knife to slice the acorns across. I find that they're twisting off easily after this. You can use garden shears to cut the nuts in half. You could use a hammer, but it tends to pulverize the nuts a little bit more than I like. And this nut will really give you an idea of how much space is between the nut and the shell when they're properly dried. Now it can take us about a month in Mediterranean weather to get our acorns that dry in the sun. So this is going to be something that you'll have to spend some time researching in your area. This nut um, has is moldy. Or I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it, but it goes in the in the bowl with the shells and the pieces that aren't acceptable. There are there will be probably about 10% that are not usable. They've either been destroyed by some insect or another. Um, you might have noticed the large holes on the sides of them, but that doesn't necessarily mean the nut is destroyed. If it's been dried out properly like that, now there is the perfect nut. I mean, that is textbook egg corn. <laughs> so you have uh, many choices of when and how you want to prepare acorn as long as you've got it safely in storage. This time I'm going to show you a method that takes three days, uses very little water, and results in a very, very nutritious, tasty, and delicious flour. This one has a hole from an acorn weevil, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's, um, it has been damaged. And in this case, it has not been damaged. While shelling the acorns, they are sorted and only the best ones are kept for flour. This one has an old expired grub in it. And all of that, uh, all of those pieces and shells that we can't use for flour, we give back to the chickens who love it. The shells would, I imagine, make excellent pellets, but I have not uh, got any direct experience with that but I have simply tried to light them on fire and they're very flammable, so I think they'd make excellent pellets. These have just been in water for a couple hours, not even, and you can see how hard they are. So they'll have to soften enough to be sliced. 
they just stay in still water like this um, overnight and then I'll change the water tomorrow. Hey there, it's day two and I'm going to show you what the acorn looks like that we've had in water since yesterday. You can see a lot of tannic acid has has leached out, but probably not enough yet. The important thing is to see if they're soft enough yet to slice. They're getting there. I'm going to leave them for one more day. I left them in the same water. I didn't change it. And then I decided to play around a little bit while I had some time. Right now I'm just playing around with this little grater because I like the idea of just popping a few nuts in water the night before if you want to add some acorn into a dish. And then just using this thing to get it into a nice fine texture. Uh, it smells absolutely divine. So now it's been two days and I'm going to change the water before I start slicing them. I'm going to save the water that is has been infused with uh, tannic acid because I also like experimenting with that and uh, fermenting it and seeing what sort of byproduct I can make out of that. By the way, the glass bowls that you'll see me using in these videos were all taken from the garbage. They are the front window of front-loading washing machines. And because we have such hard water here on Kaab, washing machines don't tend to last very long. And at every stage of the process, I'm picking out acorns that aren't absolutely perfect for flour. I've rinsed them out a few times at the end to get rid of some of the debris. And I'm just chopping them up so that the water reaches more surfaces. And they're going to go back in for another day. Some of them are harder than others. The ones that are really, really soft and soggy, I throw into the chicken bowl. Like this one, for instance, it, something's not going on right there. Probably mold. But the others, they smell like fresh yeast. Not yeast, exactly. They smell like fresh bread. The water that I had them in here, I didn't change for two days. And I didn't refrigerate it because it was quite cool in here. It was about 10 degrees Celsius. And uh, I didn't stir it. I didn't change it. Nothing for about 48 hours. The tannin levels are so high in these that as the tannin leaches out into the water, it serves as a natural preservative for the nuts. So you can leave them even in a week and nothing will happen. You might get a bit of a mold on the top, but nothing will happen affect the nuts. But two days is usually plenty of time for these nuts. They're quite sweet, even though they're high in tannin. They're red acorns, so the tannin flushes out quite easily and quickly in fresh water. I think it's really, really important to understand that your acorns are going to be different than my acorns, and it's going to be really important to experiment. Just try different things. Now that I have the acorn sliced up and in fresh water, I'll leave it for one last night. I'm using filtered spring water because I'm up in my house where the water is not all filtered. Uh, this is something you'll need to take into account, the quality of your water and what it needs. So I've measured the, the stuff that I, that I grated with this little grater. 
it's about half a cup and I'm gonna put half of it, about a quarter cup, in 300 milliliters of water. So about a cup, no, more than that. Yeah, about a cup and a quarter. And I'm gonna leave that overnight to see how much tan and actually comes out of it. If it's not too much, then I would consider this a very easy and quick way to add acorn into your diet. And it only involves one tool and no electricity. So one more night, but I can see already that the majority of the tannin has leached out with the first two day leach. I'll be curious to see what this looks like in the morning. Good morning. So not much tannin was left in the shredded stuff, which means I'm going to put it on my cereal this morning. See how that goes. Not the stuff that's been leached now will have to be either used wet as it is, or it'll need to be drained and dried out. But I've got this stuff, this dry stuff, which was just acorn that was acorns that were soaked for two hours and then grated with the um, the razor blade. And I've I've put a good couple tablespoons on there. So that'll be that'll really boost my, my breakfast cereal. It's day three, and we're going to um, completely drain this off and rinse them, and then grind them up, and talk about different methods to dry out the leach decor. First, I've gotta go get a um, food processor because I've only got my big industrial stuff down in the kitchen, and um, I need a small one anyway for my own cooking, so I'm gonna go buy one of those, and I'll be right back. There was very little tannin in the in the last batch. So I'm gonna rinse that out. It just took a couple minutes to rinse out the last of the tannin, agitate them a bit, and it starts to run clear with cold water. If you use hot water, you're going to eliminate a, a lot of the goodness of the acorn, a lot of the nutrients and the starches and the oils. I would never use hot water on acorns. And they just don't taste as good and they, and they lose their texture. So these are ready to, these are ready to chop up. I, this is brand new, so we'll see how well it works. Sit and dry it a bit. Oops. So that did a nice job. <laughs> grinding it into a thick meal and this can be used in bread this can be used in all kinds of recipes so we're going to take this after I grind it all up and I'm going to show you how I'm going to dry it first of all where am I putting it one of our magic bowls. So if you want it to be finer than that, what you'll need to do is grind it to this point with whatever food processor you have. I'm assuming yours is larger and stronger than mine. And then you can use either a coffee mill or another kind of, if you have another flour mill attachment for your KitchenAid to get it even finer. But uh, that last, that second batch there that I really buzzed longer, let's see, it's pretty 
fine. Mm. <laughs> it has not lost any of its goodness or any of its aroma. Um, again, if you if you boil your acorns or you treat them with hot water, they're gonna lose everything. They're not gonna taste like anything. They're not gonna smell like anything. It'll be like putting wood chips in your in your food. Okay, so after I get this third one ground up, we'll go in the other room and I'll show you where I'm going to dry them. I'm pretty happy with that little thing. It did the job. I wasn't sure if it would. So I've decided to dry it on a piece of wax paper in this room that has a lot of natural sunlight. And um, it could go outside, but it's just easier to do it here since it's such a small quantity. So what I've got is um, wax paper oven for baking, baking paper, I don't know what you call it. Um, and I've put it on top of some some shelving liner new that I had in the drawer just to protect my antique here. And just spread out nice and thinly. And that should be dry by tomorrow. You can put this in the oven, but you have to be very, very careful. It does not need to stay in very long and the oven needs to be very, very low. Even just the oven light sometimes is enough. And the oven door should be cracked so that any moisture, steam that comes off of it um, escapes. But unless you're interested in standing over the oven for an hour or two hours, um, and the electricity, of course, that you'd have to use for that method, um, I, I just use the sunlight and the, and the warmth of the air. If I put this outside, it would dry probably within a couple of hours today because it's very, very bright. Of course, the thinner I spread it, the more quickly it'll dry. And at some point I'll come along today. Well, this is right in the center of my house, so <laughs> it won't be very difficult. I will, I will turn it over a little bit, agitate it. It'll get crusty on the top and I'll turn it over a bit. And this, I'm going to use this just as it is in bread. I'm not going to make it any thinner than this consistency. But if you're going for flour, you would definitely have to get a mill involved. I have a very large mill downstairs and I do large quantities of very soft flour. So for me, this is a real novelty. But I just think this would be amazing in all kinds of recipes. I really hope you've enjoyed um, the information that I've shared with you. I can't go away without plugging my book, which is available on Amazon for the time being. I know we all hate Amazon, but uh, I live too far away to be able to ship it directly. So uh, if you're interested in getting a lot more detail, you can always um, check that out. Of course, there's lots of information online. And um, until next time, keep eating acorns.